Hello, and welcome to Zim Explorer. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this Explorer, we're going to take a look again at the app Baby You Can Tune My Car. So this will be the third part, and probably the final part of this, where we take a look at how to make the car shake more as we use the, the knobs to control the volume. So let's go uh, take a look at what we had before. Now, if you haven't seen the earlier ones, take a look at Zim Explore for the, uh, the first two in this series. Uh, you'll see that we have an app like this. It says, baby, you can tune my car. We hit yes. And in comes all of the, the ways that we can tune. Now, if we turn these right up, watch how much it shakes. But if we turn them right down, it shakes less until finally it doesn't shake. Cool, huh? Let's go to the code and see how that's done. We're going to turn down the sound right now so it doesn't bother. Well, I mean, not that it bothers us again, but we're trying to talk through this as well, aren't we? Okay, so we all settled. In the last little while, we saw how to bring in those four dials and the four sliders there. Uh, we saw how to animate in the car and do the very first one. We saw how to uh, bring in that first opening screen and the button and the animation. And we went through a lot of, uh, we basically went through every step in here and talked a bit about it and spent some time. And that's why it's been a three-part series. So we'll do the same thing here <clears throat> as we go into our ending. Now, just a quick review. When we brought in the sounds, uh, where, where was it? We were wiggling the car. Yeah, the wiggling of the car. So we're bringing in the sounds. Yes, we've got those in sounds. And here's the wiggle of the car. We talked about how we're increasing the wiggle or we're setting the min of the wiggle. This is the rotation of the wiggle uh, to a min rotation and a max rotation. And then also the height that the car is going, the up and down of the car to a min y and a max y. Um, this is the result of a function. So if later on we change the min, rate, uh, the min r and the max r, if we change those later, whenever it wiggles, it will pull the changed amount as the minimum and maximum. And indeed, so all we need to do is increase those as we increase the dials. But we didn't have, we didn't see that yet. However, we did talk about how these work. So if you want to know how those are work, working, you can check the earlier uh, versions of Explore. We also had these master volumes. I think we deal with that in the upcoming, as well as the sounds inside of sounds. So where we want to do that is when we turn the dials. And we've got four dials, four dials that are being tiled here. And that's stored in a tile called dials. That's a container. So basically, it results in a container with four dials in it. We can loop through containers by saying dials.loop. <clears throat> So a Zim container, I think a Zim container is the only thing that has a loop method. So we've also used Zim loops for looping through a number. We say loop 10 and then call a function, or we can loop through an array or loop and whatever the array is, comma, call this function. So you can't say array dot loop because um, we decided not to modify the array class in JavaScript. That's generally good practice not to do that. But the dials are the containers. So this is a Zim container. They are ours, and we're welcome to modify those and put our own methods on those, obviously. So we did. You could also say a loop, comma, uh, or dials, like that. Call that function. So that would be allowed as well, loop. So here we are using the Zim loop function, loop through dials, which is a container. And each time we get given the dial, and we get given the index and then we get given a total, that kind of thing. But uh, it's a little bit easier here to use the method. So dials.loop, call this function. OK, and uh, again, each time we're given a dial and an index. I don't know if we use that index. Yes, we do, because we're matching that up to the master volumes. So what we're going to do is set the dial's current value to the master volumes at i. So it's going to set the dial to the master volumes, which are here. 
0.9, and 0.9. Shall we have a look? We open this up, and we refresh here. We hit yes. Um, the, the min is zero, the max is two, I believe. So we go up to twice the volume. This down here would be then a volume of one, and that's a volume of 0 0.5. 0 0.5, this is, I guess, a volume of 0.9 right there. That would be one. I think we're going up by 0.2s. What are we going up by in the dials? Step of 0.1. So we're going up by 0.1s. OK, um, so where were we? Down in here, we're looping. Yeah, so we're setting the current uh, uh, volumes. And same with when we loop through the sliders, by the way. Down here in the sliders, we're looping through the sliders and setting them to the master pan locations. And in each case, we're calling a change event. And more happens in this change event. So, well, let's look at the other one first then. So here's the slider. When the slider changes, we um, are finding out which slider is changing by using the E, e.target.currentValue. And we're setting the sounds at I. So those are the sounds objects right here. Sound at I, so sound at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So those are the sounds here in the slider looping. We're setting the sounds pan to whatever the e.target.current value is. And this is the slider. So if we come on back here, these are the sliders. We initially set the sliders at, at the right places. And now whenever we make a change of the slider, we're setting the pan to the value of this slider. And if you take a look, the value of the sliders are up in the styles here. The sliders have a minimum of negative one, that's a full pan to the left, and a maximum of one, that's a full pan to the right. And sliders uh, default to being um, no steps. So by default, a slider is an analog slider where it just goes up by, you know, by decimal numbers. Whereas a dial by default, if you don't have a default on the dial, the steps are one. That's why we had to put in a step there, because by default it would be a step of 1, and 0, 1, 2 would be the only three settings we would have for the volume, which is not what we want, so we adjusted those to have steps. If we wanted it continuous, that would be a step of 0. If we have a step of 0, then we wouldn't see the little ticks, uh, but we would have a continuous dial. What was it there? I'll undo point one. Okay. So we're sort of bouncing around all over the place, but hopefully you're still with me. We had taken a look at the uh, change event on the slider. It's a little bit easier. So I wanted to get that out of the way. Now let's take a look at the change event on the dial, because it's the change event on the dial that not only sets the volumes, but also sets these min and max things for the wiggle. So in the first case, it it sets the sound at I, so as we loop through our dials, the left one, the next one, the next one, and the last one to the right, we're setting the sounds, the volume, at the master volume, which is how it started, times the uh, value in the slider. So here, for the slider, whoop, 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 no, sorry, in the dial, my apologies, the dial goes from 0 to 2. So that means um, when it's at two, it's going to be twice as big as this amount, the master volumes. So it's not quite setting it to exactly the volume. And the reason for that is the sounds of the cars are louder than the sounds of the animals. So we could have fixed that in pre-production. We could have adjusted those volumes and resaved the Resave the sound files, but it's almost just as easier to just as easy to do it here. We're just saying make the the sounds of the cars half as big basically as the sounds of the animals. The well, sounds of the cars are also a bit more consistently there, whereas the sounds of the animals are um, more uh, off and on a little bit. We'll call it. So there they are. So when it's twice as much the car will be at full volume, but the sounds of the animals will be at almost twice as much. When it's at zero, zero volume, it will be zero times this number, and therefore that volume goes away. So that's how we're adjusting the volumes with the, the dial. 
You can also adjust volumes with the slider. Basically, the slider and the dial in Zim are the same, except the slider is along a straight line and the dial is on a circle. There's a few other differences. The dial can wrap around, so you can keep on increasing the sound. So a dial really uh, is a bit more flexible, I suppose. Uh, in this little square space, you can you can basically dial to any number you want. You can just keep on going, and you can easily dial negative and that kind of stuff. A few other differences, um, but for the most part, it's kind of doing the same thing. Now, here's the fun part. We're going to set the min y equal to the results of the total volume. So we wanted the min y to be based on all of the volumes, not just the one volume of the slider that we happen to be changing. So that would have been easy enough to do. We could have put the e dot current target dot value, taken that and just stuck it here. And then the min y would have been based on only the, the dial that we're changing. But that's not what we want. We had to apply a total volume. So what we're doing, well, this is kind of silly, isn't it? We don't need to call that four times. We should change that to be uh, var total volume is equal to TV. <laughs> do you guys even know what a TV is? It's been a while. <laughs> anyway, maybe you do. Total volume, and then we throw TV in here. So we'll have to make that change in code pen as well, because that's just calling the function that adds up the volumes uh, four times for no reason. We, we can just call that once. We do need to check the total volume every time we change the dial because that dial changing will, will change the total volume. Okay, so does that look good? And then what we're doing is we're setting, once we find a total volume, we'll have to go look at that, but uh, we haven't seen this function yet, it's just down here. Once we have a total volume, we then take the minimum y and multiply it by 0.5. This is the y jumping up and down. As a matter of fact, in the past, I've been doing the r's first and then the y's. So let's keep that consistent. So here's the minimum r. We take that and multiply it by just a little bit. And the maximum r by twice as much, it looks like. And that uh, was just a bit of playing. And we can find out the range that we want. If we increase that to 1, you would see that the car would jump more. This is the minimum value. Uh, if, we, if we kept this at the same amount, if we said point, point 0.5 like that, or point zero 0.05 and point zero 0.05, then the car would uh, rotate always the same angle. It would always go uh, 0.5 degrees times whatever the total volume is. All right. Whereas if we put a different min and a different max, then it, it it wiggles it a little bit better. It's not it's not just back and forth the same amount. It's a random amount that it's going back and forth. But it always does go back and forth, and that's what's cool about a wiggle. It's a special way that we handle it that means it always goes positive one way and then negative, and then positive and negative, and positive and negative. And that's really hard to do with animating. Uh, you'll find that it's not terribly easy to do because it's got a, uh, an animation goes from one thing to another. Well, the problem is, is we're trying to wiggle about a center point. So we need a center point uh, to start at, and then we animate to the right. Now we've got to animate to the left a different amount because it's, it's, uh, we animated to the right half the amount first and then back uh, over a full amount and then back over a full amount. So it's sort of like the very first step is off, which means wiggling always takes um, uh, sort of two or three steps to kind of do. Well, we took those two or three steps and threw it into a wiggle. And yay. <laughs> cool. That's got a fun name too, doesn't it? Uh, right. So the, what we need to do is take a look at how this total volume is calculated. I'm sure you could figure that out. Here it is right here. We start off with a volume of zero, and we're going to loop through all of the dials each time we get our dial. And then we find uh, out or we add the, the dial's current value to the dials mount. I think you can do that without the squiggly brackets. Can you? I think so. I don't um, I don't really use, well, I've just started using the arrow functions, so I'm not fully confident in them. Okay, so dials, and then we're looping, and uh, each time we get a dial, and we're adding to the 
the zero the first time it's looping the current value and then the next time it loops we that's that total's been increased with the plus equals so we're adding the next dial's current value to it etc and in the end you get a total value now it turns out that if you and I, I think it's maybe a bug I guess in Zim I should probably check it out more fully but if you try and wiggle and pass in a or this is what's happened anyway, or seems to have happened if you try and wiggle and pass in a min of zero and a max of zero it just stops the wiggle <laughs> so I'm not sure if the, it, there didn't seem to be an error or anything it just no longer wiggles uh, it probably says hey you, you, you're trying to wiggle me at zero sorry uh, you're not wiggling me at all. Little did it know, though, that we were passing in a variable way to wiggle, like that, that those numbers might change. And therefore, the wiggle kind of shut itself down or didn't even run. It, it failed gracefully. It said, no, nope, there's nothing here to wiggle, and just closed. But later, if we change the min and max, uh, then there would have been something to wiggle. So anyway, it's probably okay. It's just a bit annoying. What we just made sure to solve that was that when we get a total volume that we add just a very small amount to it and that uh, makes it look like it's not wiggling but at least it keeps the wiggle open okay that was our small uh, kludge fix whatever you call that call that there's a word for it in coding <laughs> whatever kludge is fine <laughs> kludge Alrighty, so that gets our total volume each time, and then we set our uh, min and max. So are you getting it with those min and maxes? The wiggles happen, and those min and maxes get changed as the volumes go up and down. Isn't that amazing? I love it. Well, what else happens here? And We finished off what we're doing. Total volumes. There's the sliders. Yep, we looked at the sliders. We have some rectangles. We didn't quite look at those, but they're pretty basic. We made some big, we re oh, big rectangles, some big rectangles, and we skewed them. We probably didn't even have to. We could have rotated them most likely. But anyway, we did skew them because we didn't, uh, initially when we were first making this, we weren't sure if we were going to see the tops of the rectangles, these skewed things or not. Or we even thought of doing our volume sliders in these big skewed rectangles so that instead of dials, you could uh, run your fingers along these um, slanted rectangles as a big slider. But uh, in the end, uh, once we put this effect on, we're wiggling those as well. So here they are wiggling in their X position. Note that the one, the which one, the red one, although it's a little bit awkward, I suppose we should switch these two. So I'm going to sit on this line, sit on this line, and go Control or Alt Y or whatever. Oh, T, Alt T. And that transforms them. I just swap those two lines. Whoop, whoop. Um, the red one is at the back. So the red one goes at three quarters of the stage. Uh, because there's a red light at the back, so I wanted this red overlay to be more towards the brake light. The blue is at the front. It's only at a quarter of the stage. That's what it's wiggling about. This is the point that that line is wiggling about, stage width divided by four. So that's a quarter of the width of the stage. And then the green one wiggles about the middle right there. Uh, they look fine, by the way, if they all wiggle about, about, about the middle. About, 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 about the middle. Um, but uh, in some fine tuning, if we want to make sure those rectangles sort of get spread out a bit, we're now wiggling the one about a quarter, one about the half, and one about three quarters. And uh, there's how much, what is this one doing? This is the location that we're wiggling about. This is the minimum that we're going to wiggle. So we're going to wiggle at least each time 100 pixels going up to half the stage width as the maximum X amount. And these are the times that we're going to wiggle uh, that in. And we're cheating a little. Do not do this. It's not good practice. We're dotting onto the end of it. This represents the object right here because wiggle returns the object. So does center reg returns the object. Skew returns the object. And that is the object, the new rectangle. Note we haven't even stored it in a variable. If we wanted to apply the blend mode right here, we would have had to put it in a variable like uh, const r1 is equal to, I don't know if you can call a constant a variable, but whatever, what the heck, at least I'm using const. Const is a variable that doesn't change. Why is it called a variable? <laughs> and then you would say r1 here, not indented. Okay, that's normally how you would do it because the issue is the blend mode 
does not return the object. So for instance, if we had this with the R, or sorry, with the blend mode dotted on to the end, what is the value of R? Well, it's no longer the rectangle. The value of R is the string overlay because that is what is getting assigned to that. So um, obviously we don't want to store overlay. But if we're not needing it ever again, we can always, if we want, dot a property right onto the end of our chainable methods. And that's what we've done there. So that's kind of like a cheat, <laughs> isn't it? We sometimes do that too with the on method. The on method as well does not return the object. So you could dot the on method onto an end of a chain, but then you won't have access to the object anymore. Um, but if you don't need access to the object anymore, yes, you can dot on the on method, even though it doesn't return the object, just as you can dot on a blend mode property because we're not going to need it anymore. And that's an overlay. The difference is kind of cool. Do you want to see what it looks like with the difference? Difference like that. And we'll run it here. Refresh. To my car, yes. Whoa. It's a little bit harsh because now you see the rectangles all the way along. That's the difference mode. I kind of liked whatever we had before. What was it? A screen or an overlay? Because you can only see it on the solid. You can't see it on the, the white there of the background. So that looks like this. But you just go through the different blend modes. They're called composite off. Uh, um, Omp, omp, comp, comp, omps. They're called composite operations in uh, the HTML5 Canvas API. So uh, CreateJS, which Zim is based on, the amazing CreateJS library, shouts out. Um, the CreateJS library calls it a, a composite oper. Um, <laughs> I can't even say it. Composite operation. Operation. A composite operation is what CreateJS calls it as well. And I'm not used to that. I'm used to the Photoshop, which calls them blend mode. So I just wrap that in a, uh, in a getter setter method, I think, or something like that. So I call them blend modes. And there you go. So do you like that one? I like it too. Or you can't see the rectangles on the white, on the lighter there, only on the stuff where there is, where there are things. <clears throat> we brought in a bunch of text here, along with the fun reference to duos and digiduos. Actually, it's a digidu, but I had a bit of an issue. A digidu, I wanted to like maybe call it a digidu, the things that we make, like this that we're looking at is a digidu. It's also a feature, a project, an app. In interactive like app is okay but is it really an app you know like uh, if it were an app to tune a real car then it'd be more of an app but this is like just a fun little thing it's a, I hate calling art app so the the hopes are to make these interactive things uh, have a name and I talked about this in the very first of the uh, explorers so this is a slight review of it but there's duos uh, and plural is the issue, like a duo, that, okay, video, audio. Uh, do, how do we say if you have more than one audio, uh, audios? You don't really say that video. Oh, you say videos for sure. Audios? I suppose you say audios. <laughs> yes. Um, often you refer to it in general as audio uh, instead. Of, isn't that funny? But you definitely would say videos. There are four videos here. You, I can't remember saying there are four audios here, but maybe. Because um, you then might refer to them as songs or tracks or something like that. Anyway, the duo plural then would be duos. Digidu as a singular. Digidus is kind of like, what does that look like? Is that a is that digidoos? Is that, that's digidoos, unfortunately. Digi, that's digidoos. I guess that's digidoos. And so it prompted me in this poetry, bit of poetry, to call him a digiduio. And maybe that's kind of nice. <laughs> a digiduio is uh, extra, and your duio is a short form of a digiduio. <laughs> but one thing it does apply is if you have a digiduio, then maybe a duio is not digital. You know, it, it could be digital, but it's not necessarily digital. And I'm not sure if that's 
what I intend. Because do you know what it's called when it's not digital? Do you know what is a great name for these things when you do something? Think about it in the physical world. We have got a name for it, but we don't have a name for it in a digital world. In the physical world, it's called an activity, which is great because you're acting. It's an activity. But if you go and try and call it a digital activity, fine, a digital activity, but activity just seems a little bit kindergarten or something like, oh, what activity are we going to do? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's a great name, but it just has a bit of a childish feeling or possibly you still do activities when you're older, when you're doing some sort of like bonding uh, activity or team building activity. Let's do a team building activity. So it's kind of got the wrong feel for it. Um, anyway, like I said, we're, we're missing that digital version of what we build. And this is, this right in front of us is a great example of, I don't know what to call this because it's not a game. Like I said, it's not quite an app. It's not really art. It's just something that's fun, <laughs> you know? Uh, so it's like, what do we call that? I don't know. A feature? mini site <laughs> it's just got it has no name so i want to call it a duo you with me i know it sounds silly but if enough of us call it a duo it won't sound silly anymore i swear like in five years everybody will just call it a duo and nobody will think anything about it just like a video or an audio it's something that we do it's a duo it just has to transcend that initial what are you talking about i don't know if you remember when the ipad came out it's like what <laughs> what Wait, this is called an ipad are you kidding me? That's so silly. <laughs> and now everybody calls it an iPad without a second thought. Hello, telephone. Uh, perhaps that's uh, one of my viewers out there. Oh, yeah, so many viewers call in. <laughs> Not even live, are we? All right. Anyway, enough of that silliness, huh? I mean, this has been a little bit of a silly, uh, a silly recording. <laughs> That phone better stop ringing. Uh, it has been kind of a silly recording series, but uh, I know we've broken this into three, spent more time with it. What's this time out doing? A scroller. Ah, yes, this is the scroller along the bottom. And what I decided is let, let people see. There's the scroller along the bottom that we're looking at. I think it's the last thing that we get to see today. Uh, we, we go in, we want them to see the car and get started. So here they are getting to play around with all of it. And of course, yeah, you're hearing that. And then we bring in the scroller. We pause for a second and let people read the scroller. Note that we've really tried to tune that down a little bit. We put orange on yellow, so it, it doesn't really get in the way if you're wanting to look up here. And, uh, but it does give a little bit of extra things that, that people can read. Options here would have been to show one and then wait for a bit and then crossfade into another and then another. That might have been an easier way to read through them. Uh, the scroller is, I don't know, it's a love-hate relationship. Of, of course, when the web first came along, there were scrolling messages on sites because we could do it. And uh, that just became, no, 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 don't do that marquee type, no, no, don't do that. You know, it was sort of like along the lines of blink. No, 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 don't blink text. But we're bringing it back here in a slightly artistic way in our duo. <laughs> in our digidoo. It's still hard because, you know, it makes me chuckle when, when I try and put it in there. Do you know what the word for saying the word in real life is or like in 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 the language in use or in usage? The word is called the vernacular. So it, it makes me laugh when I hear it in the vernacular. <laughs> But the word vernacular is actually kind of funny, too. The word vernacular is just as fun, funny as a digidoo, I think. Um, but anyway, there we go. Uh, so we're waiting a bit. We're waiting eight seconds before this scroller comes in. And we've thrown in a scroller. And that scroller will scroll a label. Uh, here's the backing of the scroller. We put we went to the Zim Duo technique here of the configuration object. We're passing in the backing of a new label so that we could get to this gap fix. The gap fix normally is a positive number will bring these things together. So a gap fix of a positive number brings your backgrounds together to fix that gap a certain amount. 
But in this case, we're actually wanting to separate the gap, which is a bit unusual. So we have to throw in a negative number, which separates these uh, the label from itself. So basically, a scroller makes two copies of whatever you pass in as the backing, makes two copies. It scrolls one, and then it scrolls the other kind of afterwards. Well, we don't want those to bump right together like an image usually. If we have a background image, we want that to bump together. Sometimes as the code goes, a little gap, a little gap gets in there. Um, seems to sometimes build in time. So you can put in a positive gap fix if, if that's happening for you. Uh, we're starting at a speed of zero, and this is how we're showing the scroller initially. Uh, by the way, anything that you want to add to the scroller, the scroller is not a container. The scroller does not get added to the stage. It's, it's, a, it's a control. The uh, scroller controls something that's already on the stage. And indeed, it is this backing, this new label right here, which is positioned on the stage at a certain place. And it's got an alpha. Just watch that when it makes the copy. It, uh, it's going to alpha that, and we're caching that. Uh, text is a text is a vector, and if you have a lot of text, that's a lot of vectors. Can sometimes slow your stuff down. So if you cache it, then it's just like an image, and the GPU takes care of it, and um, it, there's less slowing down. Certainly on mobile as well. So just watch that when you have a lot of text. And after three seconds, then, and this is after eight seconds, after three seconds, uh, three seconds after eight seconds, then we're setting the scroller speed to two. Uh, this has been a Zim Explorer, and our last little bit, though, is to show the, the various labels that we have. Uh, we're putting <coughs> a label up top left, and we're animating that in at a certain time. And we're putting an icon at top right, and that icon goes, so when we tap the icon probably. There we are tapping the icon. There's that um, skewing. Now positioning is tricky because we're skewing. We're starting off with a skew of negative 90. That means you can't even see it. It's just like skewing it 90 degrees and basically flattens it. Uh, because of that, when we go to position it, it's not ready yet in height. It has no height. So the position gets messed up, which meant I had to do some finagling here to take the height of it times the 0.35, which is a scale, because it's also a scaled icon. It's like, Arrgh. and um, we're also animating the alpha up, I think. Oh, that's on a hover, sorry. So we start off with the alpha of 0.75, and when we hover, it goes to a 0.9. So isn't that neat? That's that's just quickly applying a couple roll roll over, roll off things. And um, so a dot hov is a way that we can apply uh, hover alpha to that. And the tap is going off to Zim when we tap on it. And we're animating, we're waiting that certain amount of time before we unskew this. And then we're animating the skew back to one in a certain time with a back out. Do you want to see that lovely animation? Let's try it again. So watch up in this corner as soon as we hit yes here. There it is. So it just sort of pops up. It was skewed sitting right here. And as soon as we animate it to... Uh, Pop up. That's kind of cool. I like the effect, and that's still doing it. What have we done wrong? That's definitely we messed up somewhere. Maybe it wasn't even what we were looking at. Uh, where is she? It's the icon. Maybe we changed something else on the scroller. So I thought I put all that back, but perhaps not. Scroller speed gap fix speed zero. Our scroller seems to be not finding the right location. I don't know why. What did we change? Uh, anyway, I don't know. It, it, scroller had been working fine before. Maybe, oh, we didn't save it. So, yeah, it's still that old issue. So, here we go. And refresh here. Hopefully, after that save, we're good with that scrolling thing going. But there it is popping back up. I was going to say, though, I like the effect of taking a logo. Say you had a big logo here center regging it. So the center reg logo with a skew slightly off and then animating the skew slightly on or even have two logos right on top of one another. One skewed one way, one skewed the other way and then skewing them in. It's a neat animation. We did it on uh, one of our, our previous games. You want to see that? I think I know where it is. So under examples, hmm, it was... Splatoid, I think it was. Splatoid. 
older game. It wasn't. It was just a quick kind of game. Do you see it? Spl oh, there it is. Splatoid right there. So there's the. Let's click on in. See that? Ah, oh, yeah. Cool, huh? Watch the logo. Ooh, Splatoid. So that's a skewed effect on that. Looks pretty cool, huh? Splatoid. And then in come all the animation. The, the idea behind Splatoid, by the way, is this thing is one of those. I think it's this one right here, and I got it correct. That thing is one of these. Ah, I got it wrong. It was that one. Okay, so you got to quickly look at it. Sometimes it's easy because I saw one stick going down that, and it's got two sticks. But sometimes another one has two sticks too. Like, look, all those two have one going off to the right. You have to, oh, and I got it wrong. Anyway, it keeps track. Uh, what does this do? It gives you a, a backing fill on it. I don't know if that helps or hinders. And uh, it keeps on going through. It has difficulty levels as well. Uh, as it gets more difficult, 7, 10, uh, I think that's 10. When does it go to the next level? Or maybe I have to get a certain number right for it to go to the next level. But anyway, then it starts adding more of these edges around until it looks like this, like a little hairy asterisk. And you're going, oh my god, when is that? So that's a game splatter. I like that game. Uh, right, and this has been a Zim Explorer. Are we Are we there? Is that it? We I talked about the icon, we skewed it, and it's the end. The end, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, now, let's see if I can handle this, this um, next thing here where we go to the Explore thing. Oh, this has been a Zim Explorer. I am Dr. Abstract. Yes, that was good. I don't know if you remember on the second one, I was talking about the problems fading in a sound. Well, woohoo! We made it in the sound! Oh, so happy! You guys must be happy too, as well, because you've been listening to me for a long time. And if you've made it this far, truly, if you've made it this far, you're probably already in Slack and working with Zim with us. But if you haven't, you've made it this far and you enjoy this kind of stuff, please come on and join us at Slack, zimjs.com slash Slack. We'd be happy to talk to you. Uh, love Zim, and you'll probably be happy to use Zim, no doubt. Ciao. Have a great night. Or day. <laughs>